I pledge my allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is Matt Singleton, and welcome to Bible Smack. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 2. Behold, I will make Jerusalem's cup a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. May God bless the reading of his word. Now, I'm going to say where we left off, we were kind of describing the situation with New England and uh, Puritan life. Um, basically, um, you know, the ins and the outs. You know, the fact that on one level they were very moral, but on another level they were trying to secure Israel. And they were not actually Israel. But yet, there is a, a tug and pull to that, I think, in the life of the believer. And, you know, those who follow God, those who don't follow God, and how that all works out. The, uh, I'm going to skip forward to the 1700s politically, and then we'll go and look at things with the history of the New uh, Testament Christians going through that period, so we'll kind of back up next round. But basically, when you see um, the ideology that's going on with these colonialists, um, especially with uh, Puritan life and things like that, uh, what you are seeing is people who are striving for their freedom, their independence, for their way of life. Now, that does not mean they're striving for everybody's way of life in some sort of grand scheme of things. Uh, they felt that God had promised them this land that they were going to inherit. There's a great scene I saw the other day, and it's from the movie The Gangs in New York. And uh, basically, these gangs meet at the uh, Five uh, Points, which is where you know you have all these rival gangs, and it's divided up into two. You know, one's led by a Catholic priest. Uh, representing uh, mostly Irish immigrants, but some Catholic immigrants from other countries, and then the people who were originally there, the English Protestants. And that was led by a butcher. And he says, we will, you know, start war in the old ways, according to which, and, uh, you know, may God have, you know, give us the strength to defeat you, and, um, you know, destroy you and your popery. And basically, you know, that he was basically saying that, you know, you represent a different empire than us, okay? It was not just um, your uh, church versus my church. All this stuff you really have to understand in light of the circumstances. It was, an, it was a completely different world, even though it's the same land that we are on today. Now, of course, the land I'm sitting on was Indian ground. But, it was in the, um, the Puritan mind, we are the new Israel. And the just as Israel had to go and find itself land and a place and a people after centuries of slavery and torment. Now, you have this tortured and tormented people in um, what we call now as the American Puritans. And they were going to set about getting their freedom. Um, there are ways that you could look at that and say, okay, well, they were right about this, but they were wrong about that, and they were wrong about that. And, you know, I've kind of said, said my statements, that they were wrong about this and wrong about that. But the question really remains is that, you know, who are we to judge? If you have a philosophy of freedom, then, you know, not only do you care about your freedom, but you say... I'm going to let them be the way they want to be. And so basically, here they were, trying to be the way they wanted to be. It was not like America today. There was not this universal English language. 
You know, uh, you had several different European countries with several different European languages. The most prominent will be not only the English, but the French. But then also the Native Americans will have their various tribal dialects. And America will even have an influence on them. The Cherokees were the first one, thanks to the Protestants, to develop a written language. Before that, they, they just don't have that. But they have their various means of communication, both by um, language, sign language, you know, smoke signals, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, when we get to this point of history, the English colonies, you know, you got the British behind them. But, you know, the British are kind of alienated in a way. All right, These redcoats, they come from the royal line, the royalty, the royal army. And they have given permission. Uh, they technically gave permission for um, the English uh, in America, the New Englanders, to gain territory all the way to the Pacific. You know, then uh, they met with an Indian leader. They call him Half King, which is unfortunately, you should have figured it out, he's not in total power, but he was in a, a, a high place of power, and he made some deals with the English colonists. But, then you have the French step in, and the French made more deals with the Indians. So, you have the Indians, and you have the French, and the Indians, just like, you know, those idiots... They were talking about in our previous episode, the Indians did get a hold of guns. You know, we have this image of like, well, they're always just with a bow and arrow, and that's all they knew. No, as soon as they saw guns, they said, we like that, you know, let's go try to get us some. All right, so basically, you know, they're not that primitive. They do have a lot of primitive issues about them, but that was not one. They, they would take a gun in a heartbeat. So... You have these various nations. It is not where we live in with a giant federal government that keeps the peace at all times. Or, even in the New Testament, the Pax Romana, you had the Roman Empire keeping the peace at all times. You don't have that system in place. So, when you get a lot of these uppity uh, history professors trying to point out every flaw with this early people, and saying, you see, look what they did to the Indians. And don't get me wrong, there were many times they did things wrong with the Indians. You have to understand that if it hadn't been that way, it would be the opposite. Maybe I'd be speaking French right now. Maybe I would be speaking, you know, some sort of Indian language. Or I wouldn't exist. Probably, maybe not exist, but I don't know. So, when you see that... It's the war. It's our side or your side. You know, you just can't say, well, how dare they? Because if they didn't dare, somebody else would dare. Maybe you were the one who wanted to dare. Okay? Um, there was this competition going on. And the French had an easier time uh, working with the Indians and trading and working out negotiations. And what were the French up to? Well, the French, let's see here, let's say you're imagining that there's like a, uh, a map of America right here. Let's say like, you know, you got, you know, this strip, this is New England, okay, and you got Virginia, and Virginia's supposed to be over there. Well, the French have New Orleans, and they have... Canada. And then, of course, you have these Indian territories scattered throughout, like the Iroquois and some other different groups. And so, basically, what they were trying to go for, what the French were trying to go for, is to encase the British. And, of course, by the British, we're not just talking about the British Army, but we're also talking about the um, Puritans. And remember, they're not always down with your um, with the British soldiers and this is going to be leading up to that next war okay um, the the royalty system is not the same as the Puritan system 
And Puritans wanted this pure idea of the um, establishment of the Mosaic Law. While the British had this idea of the God-honored and inherited right of kings. And so because they have kings, they have their own type of authority that they want to add on to things. Now, there's a lot of things that are very similar in their ways, but there are some big distinctions there. So, the French are from what? They're from Rome. They are Catholics. All right. Now, there will be a big surge, probably in the next 50 years, of atheism starting to take over. And we'll talk about that one in a later episode. Not too much later, though. Um, but basically, they are going to corner and keep New England you know, at bay, so to speak. And basically, probably you know, get rid of them altogether if they can. So, the, the rumble in the jungle starts in the forest. George Washington, really young guy, way younger than me, okay, he was like 21, um, dealing with this stuff, and uh, basically the French are setting up their forts in the English territory. Well, this is going to ignite a war. There's a, a thing here now, you know, we see like the English as, you know, oh, they're so territorial and blah, 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 and everything, but now you've got both the French and the Indians all working in cahoots with each other to destroy the, the English settlers, destroy the Puritans. So, you know, God works something out. And there is a famous story where in one of the battles, George Washington, um, you know, is kind of doing his thing, and then about 20, 30 years later, an Indian comes and meets with him, and he says, you know what? I couldn't believe it. I knew that you had God's favor. I said, what do you mean? He's like, I just shot you over and over and over again. And, you know, I'm speaking off the cuff. I'm going to say somewhere between 17 and 30 bullets that this guy shot off directly at him. And when you looked at Washington's coat, you know, there were holes going right through his back. And yet the bullets didn't hit him. See, this is the thing where when we understand that God's in control, you see God controlling destiny. Okay, If we didn't have the um, English and settlers in America, we wouldn't attract the inventors that came up with modern technology. We wouldn't have the uh, democracies and the, the freedoms that are intact in our American Constitution. You wouldn't see that. You wouldn't see a great powerful people. You wouldn't see anybody stand up during World War II and a good portion of World War I. Uh, what would the world be like if it weren't for this little skirmish right here? Where everybody headed out for these English Puritan settlers. Um, well, essentially they did fight their way out of that one, and essentially they did. Um, they won, and of course, the British were supposed to have given them, you know, freedom to kind of take more land that they were wanting. And they had promised them that they could take, you know, that land. And yet they were still, you know, backing away from promises. And, of course, we'll get to, you know, the issue of the American Revolution a little bit later. But this is key because then once they won this war, they won access to start spreading the gospel farther. And the Baptists are going to take advantage of that. And uh, we'll talk about that in the next episode. So, um, be prepared for that. But also, you know, just kind of remember these things, you know, of how God has a way of working all things out to His will. See y'all later on Bible Smack.